Hi, this is Brian Wilson, and I wanted to show you today five tips for a more dynamic notebook experience inside of Google Docs. This is an update from a previous video. Here you see I have some typing already done inside of a Google Doc. Now what I'm going to do is highlight it and begin to change it using the font styles. I'm not actually going to change the fonts, I'm going to directly change the, the writing or format styles. By changing it to a heading, it will then inject it into the pre-formatted outlines that are part of an actual Google Doc. You don't have to add these, they're naturally generated whenever you change the font styles from normal text to any of the listings that are headings, subheadings, titles, subtitles, etc. If you have a heading one and then you have a heading two, it will nest those inside the outline that is currently shown on the left hand side. One of the other things that you can do with your fonts is don't forget that you can change your font formats to have strike throughs. So if you've completed a project, you can do that where you strike through the text, but you don't actually delete it. Uh, you can also paste, but remember if you paste from a web page like I did here, it will have the background of that web page. So whenever you want to do that, you want to hit shift control and V or shift command V if you're using a Mac. Now for our next one, using font styles to make an outline or an ever changing outline. Like I've said before, as you actually use the font styles on here, it will continue to generate different outline pieces on the side. So you'll see here, once I take the font styling, the format styling off, the outline on the side disappears. Each type of heading that I add, it re-adds it to the outline. The outline button is actually the three dots or the snowman next to the three lines or the, the hamburger styling. For our third tip, what I want you to do is learn how to go pageless. If you're creating a note document that will only live in a digital space, you don't need to live in a page format. Now the way that you do this is that you go to file, go to the bottom where it says page setup and click on it. This document's already set for pageless, but I want to show you what it looks like if you actually have pages. So you'll see that it will pop up and have a different setting at the top where you'll actually have the ruler there and it will be constrained to what's going on. If you go to pageless, the actual layout of the document changes based on the size of the screen. You can also change the background color for the document into any of the ones that are available. I recommend using that first subtone document line and not doing something different. The reason why you would do this is because whenever you have multiple documents inside of your Google Drive, they'll now be color coded. So you can see here it has the blue background because it has an auto save to the yellow setting that we've already made. If you open Docs and have all of your documents open, you'll see here where I have several of them that are different colors. So if you go ahead and use one color style for all of your notes in a certain subject area, you'll be able to find your notes very quickly in Google Docs. Now for number four, what you're going to use is a table to actually format and keep track of your pieces as you add them to the pages format. So one of the things that happens when you add graphics or images to the pages format, it drops it in between the text and now it becomes hard or difficult to actually format the text. So what you want to do is insert tables that are dynamically changing their, their actual size based on the screen format that you're using. So when you go to table, you would click here. We're going to go ahead and make a four by two table. And then you can go into your first slot or your first spot and put any kind of image that you might have in your Google Drive or on your computer. So here we're going to add a map. Here it sets the map up. And then underneath it, you can go ahead and start typing a description of what the map is. Now, this is beneficial because it doesn't mess around any of the page fonts or the, the writing that you have above and below the actual picture, and it keeps them put together in one spot on the actual document. Now here, I've jumped ahead in my recording to go to my last tip. Inside the new Google update, you have the ability to create citations for MLA, APA, and Ch Chicago style formatting. So what I mean by that is there's a citation tool actually embedded. You no longer have to go out to another page. 
Now as updates are maintained, you have to realize that Google Docs may be slightly behind, so always make sure that your citations are in compliance. This is underneath the Tools feature. If you're ever working on this and you forget, don't worry, you can click on the Help button and type in Citation or Cite and it'll come up. Now if you use it before in this document, you'll notice that you'll have your citations you used before already listed there. But I want to show you how to add a new one. So I'm going to use the MLA, I'm going to add a citation, and I'm going to cite a web page. So up here I have a tab open. This is the Iranian calendars tab for Wikipedia. I copied the URL and pasted it directly into the citation engine. Now what it does is it goes back to the web page, scrapes this information, and puts it into the MLA format that you would use. It is noticeable that pieces are missing, so they'll have red highlights in the pre-format. You can go ahead and check to see if there's anything that you might have missing that your actual professor or class might require. Now one thing you'll notice is that I'm going to click Insert Works Cited here. Once that happens, I have already used that same web page three times in the citation, so I accidentally have it there. You can go in and click Delete, and it will start to delete them inside of your pieces. But you notice it doesn't actually change. So what you would do is you can do this one of two ways. You can highlight the whole thing and delete it, and then insert your works cited again. Or what you could have done is clicked on the works cited and let it auto-regenerate the actual works cited list. This is an amazing tool that they've added. And if you see here, it talks to you about how you can update your biography or your bibliography and citations at any time inside of a document. So if you want to go back and add something, you can. This is Brian Wilson with BFW Classroom again. If you don't mind, hit that subscribe button and check out some of these other tutorial videos in the list above.